So I just created a new background layer. I called it background texture. And to do to fill that, I'm going to use the gradient tool, which we haven't really used on its own. We've used lots of gradients as layer styles for our logos and coloring them, for our type and coloring it. Now we're just going to use the gradient tool straight up. Our options for gradients are up here. I have the orange ones. I, I meant to the iridescence because of the defaults in the newer versions of Photoshop. These are some of the most complex ones just to show them off. But you don't necessarily need complex. Like maybe I just want something like this. So you can also click on the gradient itself and see what it is. And then you can always customize it, right? So if I want to change this from being so pink to being a little bit warmer, I can do that. I can make it a little bit darker as well. And I can even add a color or as many colors as I want to this gradient. And basically you can create any gradient you want. You can download different gradients from sources online. And then once you have one, this is why I wanted to show it. It's kind of fun to use the gradient tool because you click and drag. And wherever you click, that's where the gradient's going to start. Whatever angle you go on, that's going to be the angle of the gradient if you're set on linear, which I would recommend right here. So if I go from this corner to this corner, I cl click, drag, and drop. Then it will do the gradient you know, in a diagonal that way. If I do it straight down, it will drag and drop there. If I go really outside of my picture and start it, and then end it really outside of my picture, you'll notice that it doesn't get as dark or as light. So this is a little bit more controllable than a layer style gradient, which will also always fill whatever pixels are in the layer. And my favorite thing is that you can layer them up. So I can make a new layer, because these are just raster layers, pick a new gradient, and go at a different angle. And then I can just play with the opacity and the blending mode. I can have it be dissolve. Just all these different crazy blending modes. And get something that might be interesting. Like maybe this. And then I can even play with layer styles. I can try satin. If you remember that from digital coloring, that will give it kind of a shimmer that's a little bit darker. Can be very subtle. <laughs> I can do uh, bevel and emboss, but maybe I just want the texture. And I like to use the water textures of the defaults at small scales with a lower depth, just to give it a little bit of that paper texture like the ones I showed you. So let's see, let's get it off of difference. Hard mix. So what does that look like? Pin light, soft light. All these things can be fun to play with in creating your own backgrounds. Yeah, so I'm just putting it underneath everything else, right? So just like we did gray, white, and, and black, now we're, we're filling a layer with different gradients, with different effects. You can do multiples of them. And it's a way of being able to create your own. You can also use your image adjustments. Remember those? We can play with hue saturation because sometimes it's just easier to recognize what you like versus setting it all up. So I can just play with the different blending modes, going right to hue saturation. And then maybe changing it to dissolve. And then maybe, maybe putting it with a white background. And honestly, that's pretty nice. I'd print that. And that's just using a gradient 
taking its opacity down on top of white. And then I've got this subtle shift of the purples going through it at an angle. So it's a little bit pinker here, a little bit purpler here, but always orange. And what am I missing? It says everything you need for a poster except a border. Right? So if I turn on my guides, I'll see where my borders were. And then I can create a new layer on the top. And this is called a border frame layer. It's going to always be turned on and off. But I'm just going to use my rectangular selection tool. Hold down shift. Go all the way around it up to my border guides. And then I'm going to say edit fill with white. At 100%. Normal mode. Turn off my guides. And now I've got my border just on the top. Now, that's one I made, a layer, a background I made, just from these two gradient layers, layered on top of each other. I'll call that gradient background. And I could definitely do more, but I tend to overdo things. And then there's the one that I created using composited resources, right? Like the graph paper, this texture, and I can layer those on top of each other if I want. Now that I have it in a folder, I can use different opacities. And so you have all this complexity from the slightly red border going into the white, from the kind of marbled texture to the ballpoint pen texture, to those different colors, to the different strokes, all supporting it and making a finished poster. And I think I'm going to leave off the grid. I don't know, what do you guys think of the grid? You get kind of decision paralysis doing digital art, right? Like so many options. Bless you. Yeah, maybe I want the grid, but I want it. Not as strong, you know, like that. Now I'm kind of liking the grid again. So you just, yeah, you just keep playing. It's all about just supporting your spot illustration and your text. And being, you always want to check it. You say view 100%. And you can just check it and make sure nothing is too soft. Right? All your vectors should be really, really clean, including the line art on your colored spot illustration. But remember, I had like the emboss and all these effects for digital coloring. But it's okay if your background's a little soft. It's sitting in the background. Okay, so if that's my finish, I save as my PSD, and then I'm going to save it Save a copy as a JPEG. For assignment six for Canvas. But I want to point you now to like some of the crazy off the rails stuff we can do because we've got time. This isn't due till next class. And if we want to use it for the student show, we want to make it as good as possible. So if I go to the class and to the assignments, you know, where we have some extra resources, whether they're created by other students, whether they're created by me, uh, just to show you the course outline. So we're working on this today. Our individual presentations begin next class. So we need to make sure you sign up and have your Google Slides link for that. And then this is going to be due next class with these elements, clean black lettering, clean color lettering, and then your finished poster. Poster with your spot illustration, with your background, and with your, your lettering. Now, from my, I like to have a text blocking sketch too, 
But from this, I can get all of those aspects. I can get my black type, I can get my color type, and I can get the full poster. So just make sure you're keeping vectors, vectors, and only keeping the things you need alive. So you're saving some memory there. But I've, I've still got a, a black vector type layer, which I don't think matters if it's turned on or off because it's all covered. But I'll just have everything turned on as I save it. Okay, now I'm going to mess with my whole thing a little bit. And I'm going to do that by doing what's called color separation. So I'm going to turn off all the layers except for the background. So I have I can just do it with the folder. So I'm going to turn off my black type. And then all of these layer up for the background. And I'm going to keep that border on. Okay, now I'm going to do something that I'll show you how you can do. I'm going to click on Option and say Layer Merge Visible. So now my background is all on one layer on its own. I'm going to turn off these other things. So it's just one thing. And then I'm going to go to Filter. And I'm going to go to the Filter Gallery. Because as I was looking for different poster inspiration and lettering, I saw one that I really liked. And it wasn't this one, which is Plastic Wrap, which is interesting. <laughs> but it is Halftone Dots. So if you go to Sketch, the sketch options, you'll see what's called a halftone pattern as a filter. And then you can play with this, whether it's done as a circle, which can be kind of cool. It's like an optical illusion effect, like almost a fingerprint. Or you can have it as lines, hatching, which looks like that. It's an easy way to build patterns into your backgrounds. Or if you do it as dots like halftone dots like things are printed it's called halftone because you have kind of this uh, half drop pattern moving down and then you can play with the size of those dots if you want to make them really really visible you can make them quite big and with the contrast of them okay then you say okay and it looks terrible but that can be layered on and put underneath first your border frame. And then if I turn on my backgrounds, all these different layers that make it, right? I can use blending mode even on top of my illustration and my text. I can start to play with these printing effects with opacity, with blending mode, and I can decide what do I want to sync these dots on. Maybe I want them on my illustration, but not on my text, right? So then what would I do? I just move my all my type layers above them. Like that. And maybe I want it underneath my illustration as well. But half toning is yet another way. So this is without it. This is with it. But I, I almost always think that helps with printing because it harkens back to what printing actually is, which is separating out discrete dots. Now that's the easy way to do it, just with a filter. The problem is you don't get any color variations that way. The more complicated way to do it, which I'll show you how to download and use, is to do this. Let's take that whole thing, the whole illustration, hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Visible, just so I have these discrete kind of experimental layers. I'll mark them as purple that I'm playing with, with these halftone dots. And now on this layer, I am going to go to Window and Actions. And we can load these actions. These are actions I've created.